Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sky Observers Hangout. We are so excited to have you with us today. My name is Michelle, and I am the Director of Public Observing at the Adler Planetarium, and I have a friend joining me today. Hello. I am Adriana. I am the astronomy educator at the Adler Planetarium. So we've got some other friends with us behind the scenes tonight. Our YouTube chat moderator tonight is Jennifer and answering questions in the chat is our astronomer friend Geza. So if you see the Adler's name highlighted in yellow in the chat, that's Jennifer. And if you see a name with a blue wrench next to it in the chat, that's Geza helping us by answering your questions and comments. So please ask us your questions tonight. Please do, and I know you guys have been doing that. So I've been saying hello to a few of you from behind the scenes. So um, Sky Observers Hangout, if you're not familiar with us, if this is your first time, um, it's a place for us to gather together to nerd out about the sky, especially at 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> and so our goal is to give you practical tips that you can find useful about a lot of things related to sky observing. If you want to just watch us, that is okay. Uh, we would love to see your questions though in the chat. So please keep those coming just as you have been all along for the last, oh, 40 minutes or so. Um, and uh, your observations are welcome as well. So feel free to interact with us and with each other. And this is our very first Sky Observers Hangout that is happening at such a late hour. It is the middle of the night here in the Chicago area. It is just past 1.30 in the morning. And we know that there are various folks in different time zones uh, enjoying the moon right now. Um, but I want to uh, show you a special hello. So give me just a second. I'm going to uh, share my screen again. And by the way, if you're wondering where I'm watching the eclipse, I'm in the inside of the Adler outreach van and I'm set up in my driveway. So we'll be showing you live views of the eclipse in just a second. Um, but I want to say a special hello to our friends at the Irkutsk Regional Astronomical As uh, Organization and the Irkutsk Planetarium in Irkutsk, Russia. They are translating our program into Russian right now. Now, um, we are so excited that you are all under one sky with us. We share the sky above and it's wonderful to share our show with you, um, no matter where they are. And I'm going to attempt to say hello, or I'm going to say welcome in Russian, Dabro Pojalovat. I hope I got that right. I apologize if I didn't. Um, but I also um, want to mention a special uh, thank you to the International Planetarium Society who made the connection between the Adler Planetarium and the Irkutsk Planetarium and Irkutsk Regional Astronomical Organization. Um, the moon is not up quite yet in Irkutsk. Um, it will rise just past the point of greatest eclipse. Um, so just after three o'clock in the morning, uh, Chicago time, which would be about uh, five o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon, Russia time or where they where Irkutsk is right now. So um, it's going to rise there in about 90 minutes. Uh, so we will talk in a few minutes about the parts of Earth that are going to see this eclipse. And so, um, well, why don't we get going here? So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And by the way, throughout all this, you're going to hear us referring to our scripts and, and telling you what we're doing behind the scenes and uh, telling you all the all the ins and outs of uh, of working with multiple screens and things. So anyway, why don't we get going? Adriana, take it away. So to get this show started, uh, tell us in the chat where you are tuning in from. And as an added bonus, tell us, are you able to see the moon in the sky where you are right now? And also while you're doing that, I'm going to share a view of the eclipse. So, and I'm going to keep talking. So, why don't we do that? Because it is actually clear here. Um, so, I hope everyone's seeing the eclipse. But while you are watching us, while you are hopefully going outside, while the other planetariums, other planetariums doors are closed. Uh, for now, we are doing our best to keep our virtual doors open by uh, creating and sharing some out of this world content for you. If you wouldn't mind, um, please use the link that Jennifer is going to put in the chat in just a few minutes to donate what you feel comfortable con to contribute to our programming. Thank you so much for allowing us to keep sharing our universe with you. Yes. 
Um, you can also help us get more visibility for our shows by hitting subscribe for the Advil Planetarium's YouTube channel right below this video. If you like us, you can give us a thumbs up too. Uh, we are pleased to mention that the Adler Planetarium will fully reopen to the public on Friday, March 4th, 2022. We cannot wait to see all of you in person again. We're also pleased to mention that we have some more Skybservers Hangout shows coming up in December, January, and February leading up to the reopening. Keep an eye on our social media channels and our website for more information about all of that exciting news. All right, Adriana, is it clear where you are? Yes, awesome. but I cannot see the moon because it's out of the wrong window and it's not the window I'm currently sitting next to. But anyway, <laughs> and, and I know you that can. is probably probably <laughs> the case for quite a few people. You might have to go outside and take a look up. Um, so where where you are right now, uh, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, you may have to look to the southwest, to the southeast, or something of that sort. So we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Um, but it is clear here, as you can see, I have my camera set up right next to me. It is pointed out the window of the Adler Outreach Van, and we are looking at the eclipse live. This is a live view. How can I prove it's live? Because I am moving the image on the screen, and I am moving down. I've got a digital zoom going on the moon and I think it looks pretty darn spectacular. So this is pretty awesome. Um, all right, so where we got some people tuning in from? Where are, they, uh, where are they joining us from? All over the place, which is really exciting. I am seeing people from Chicago, of course, from Oak Lawn, from Dallas, Texas, Downers Grove, lots of places in the area, Bartlett, Illinois, um, Rhode Island, that's fun. Sky is not clear here in Guatemala. That's okay. That is why we have this live feed for you. Um, so all kinds of places. Thanks everybody for joining us. Lincoln, Nebraska. Wow. Cool. Super exciting. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Very cool. All right. So we showed the eclipse for just a sec. We will keep coming back to it. Don't worry. Um, so we're going to show you a bit about uh, some bit of uh, a bit of information about eclipses. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and we will go on. Okay. So give me a second here. No problem. Okay. So it just so happens that the sky is clear here. If you're not in a clear area, maybe it'll clear up for you in a bit. This eclipse is going to last three hours and 28 minutes or so. So hopefully it will clear up where you are. Okay. Um, all right. So we are going to focus our attention on helping you see the eclipse. Um, so if it is nighttime where you are, it's clear. If it's clear out, the moon is up in the sky. You can see this eclipse too. You can take us outside with you. Go look for the moon right now if you haven't already done that. Um, and uh, while uh, Adriana is going to talk to you, I'm going to bring up a web page. So Adriana, go ahead. Yeah, so if you are here, you probably know that there's a lunar eclipse happening right now. Um, but just to let you know where you might be able to see that, uh, you should be able to see it if you are in Canada, the United States, Mexico or Central America, far northern South America or eastern Russia. You should be able to see this eclipse as long as it, is, as it is clear out and the moon is above the horizon where you are. But if you cannot see it where you are, don't worry. That's why we've got the live feed for you. We are going to help you find it, though, if it is visible near you. Right, Michelle? Yep, we sure are. And all right. So... I want to make sure that I've got the right, I've got the page up. All right. So we're going to talk everybody through how to get to where the eclipse info is. Ah, yes. Um, so we are going to use timeanddate.com to pull up a visibility map for this eclipse. Jennifer can go ahead and link timeanddate.com in the chat if you would be so kind. Uh, so to get the information for this eclipse on the time and date site, click on the sun and moon drop down list, choose eclipses, and then click the link for the November 18th to 19th eclipse. You can see Michelle go ahead and clicking along with us. Yep. So near the beginning of the page, you'll see, um, is this partial eclipse visible in? And your city or town or somewhere close by should be listed. Uh, click on that and the site will tell you if the eclipse is visible. 
Uh, Michelle will click on the link and on the page that comes up, there will be a handy map. There we go, we can see it, right? Uh, yep. Click the pop out link for the map. Now on that map, the darker pink areas are parts of the world where you'd be able to see more or all of the lunar eclipse from start to end, and the lighter pink areas see less of the eclipse. You may see a pin that comes up on the map that should be somewhere near your location. So for ours, probably Chicago, there we go, yeah. yeah. Um, but if not, you can type your city or nearby town into the location search. If the eclipse is visible where you are, you can get detailed information like local start and end time and what you'll be able to see. Michelle will click on the pin and in the information box with the times, if you click see animation of how it will look, you'll get a video of what to expect to see. And below that box, is additional information about the direction in the sky you want to look um, and the altitude, how high it is in your sky that you'll need to look to find it. You can also always use your phone's compass to find the exact direction. And for altitude, there is a quick tip that we have shared before that Michelle's going to show you. Yep. So uh, basically where it lists altitude, it gives you the, the height in degrees above the horizon for your location. Um, it's giving me this information for Chicago. Um, so for us right now, or approximately now, the moon is about 55 degrees up. How high do I know 55 degrees is? Well, I can use my fists. If you take your fist and you stick it out at arm's length, the bottom of your fist held out at, ar at arm's length is, would you put that on the horizon, the top of your fist is 10 degrees. And so you can, uh, to get where about 50 degrees up, you can go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that's approximately how the, high the moon is in the sky right now. Um, also, it gives you a listing for direction. And the, the number that's given is the number of degrees from north. So north is zero, east is 90 degrees, south is 180 degrees, west is 270 degrees. So um, when the partial eclipse started here, for example, it said 232 degrees, so that would be to the southwest. Um, if you're looking up uh, this page for you, your numbers might be a little different depending on where you are. Um, but luckily the moon's pretty easy to see, so you should have no trouble finding it, as long as it's clear. <laughs> All right, so. What should you look for with this eclipse? As the time goes on, more and more of the moon will be darkened by the Earth's shadow. We'll talk more about what causes this in just a moment. And just so you all know, you don't need any special tools to see a lunar eclipse. Telescopes and binoculars might make for a fun viewing experience since you'll get a bit of a magnified view. So if you've got them, I definitely think it's worth using them, but the naked eye view alone will be just as interesting. So do not worry if you don't have any special tools, your eyes are plenty. And I think we promised to show more of the eclipse because we're taking yeah. advantage of the fact that it's clear out right now. This is highly unusual for Chicago for November. Absolutely. So if you've been keeping an eye, you're seeing that more and more the moon is uh, getting into that dark part of the shadow. And um, what's kind of interesting is I'm just kind of ad-libbing here. We have no idea what color this is going to appear um, at, the, at the maximum eclipse. Um, so anyway, we'll see what, what, uh, what color we get. All right. And, uh, Absolutely. what I'm doing is I'm reaching over and if you see the camera shaking, that's because my hand is on it and I'm just adjusting the focus just a tiny bit. Here we go. I can also adjust the brightness just a tiny bit. Let's see. There we go. I can see some craters. You can see t crater Tycho right here. See some of the darker areas here. You can see, at least I think you all can see my cursor. I hope so. And you can see- We can, yes. <laughs> excellent. And uh, you can see the uh, dark part of the Earth's shadow called the umbra. So, so right. Michelle, do you know what time maximum will be? Yes. So in the central time zone, maximum eclipse is 3.02 a.m. Um, if you're in the eastern time zone, that would be 4.02 a.m. If you're in the mountain time zone, it's 2.02 a.m. If you're in the Pacific time zone, it's 1.02 a.m. So 
the the eclipse happens at the same time for everyone but what time it is in your time zone will be different depending on what time zone you're in so as as we are seeing it everybody who can see the moon right now is seeing the moon exactly like this um at the exact same time there are millions of people looking at the moon right now including including places that are not the chicago area so all of you elsewhere i hope you're outside looking at it are there any other questions that uh that folks are uh, are asking that we might want to answer. Yeah, so Michelle, you mentioned that we are not sure exactly what color we're going to see. Lots of questions about if it's going to turn red, what color we should see. Could you speak a little bit more about uh, about why you mentioned we're not exactly sure? Yeah, so the color of a lunar eclipse can be different for each lunar eclipse. So where you get the color at all is when um, when you've got the sunlight shining on the earth, the earth casts a shadow into space. When the moon passes into the shadow, that's what we call a lunar eclipse. The sunlight is shining through the air at the edge of the earth during a lunar eclipse. And just like when the sun sets or, or when the moon is really low in the sky, um, the light from the sun or the moon is shining through a lot more air. Have you noticed that the sun looks like it turns orange or red when it's really, really low on the horizon? That's because the, the light is shining through all that extra air near the horizon and it scatters out the blue light from that's either reflected off the moon or coming from the sun. So when you've got a lunar eclipse, you're essentially getting a simultaneous sunrise and sunset at that exact moment as the as the uh as the sunlight is shining through that really thick layer of air at the edge of the earth at that point now the color can be different depending on if the air is really clear at that point if there's a lot of clouds if there's a lot of dust if there's a lot of volcanic activity spewing a lot of dust and other gases into the atmosphere. Um, so there are a lot of things that can alter the color during a lunar eclipse. It can be anything from light orange to really dark gray. Um, and so this one, because it's a partial, it's, all, it's, it's a little bit not misleading to say partial, it totally is a partial, sorry, that was a really bad pun, but it definitely is a partial, um, but almost all the moon is in the dark part of the shadow. So there's only a little sliver of it, about 3% that won't be in the darkest part of the shadow. So who knows what we'll get? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what we get in about uh, an hour 15 when we get to maximum eclipse. Excellent. I'm also seeing um, when is the next longest lunar eclipse? Is this the only one for my lifetime? It is if it, the longest. Yes, the next longest one. I have that. Hang on. You mean the? it's the list of the longest of each century, right? Yes, the list of longest of each century. Do you have that? Okay. Handy? Yes. So the longest one in the next century will be in 2196. Um, so this is the longest one this century and probably for my lifetime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. I'm just guessing, but probably also for your lifetime. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. So longest partial uh, lunar eclipse yes. is is, yes. till, is for that one. Yes. Um, so, okay. I'm just moving around here and we go. Still making sure we got the moon in view. All right. More questions, keep them coming. This is fun. Let me see. Can you capture it on a regular camera? You can. We're using um, a pretty regular camera, huh? Yeah, I'm using just a DSLR camera. So um, it's a Canon. Uh, I'm not a shill for Canon, but it, it happens to come with software that allows me to control the camera um, on a computer. So that's how I'm showing you this, but you don't need that. Um, you just need a camera where you can um, put it all as completely manual, meaning you can adjust the focus, you can adjust the, the uh, shutter speed, you can adjust the, um, uh, the brightness settings. And so as long as you can do that, you can get it. And if you don't have any of that, you can also do this with your cell phone. Um, Adrian, do we want to answer that question now or do we want to, for the cell phone, do we want to skip ahead and mention that? Um, if people want to take pictures, do you want, do you want to do that at this point? Do you want to answer um, a few more questions and maybe we do that? 
Yeah, let's okay. let's answer a few more questions because there's okay. a few here. Oh, somebody asked, is the moon live video or a picture? What you're seeing now is live. Okay. Um, Michelle's got a live feed going using a camera. And I will prove it. I, I don't know if you can see my video, but I am my camera is sitting in the Adler Planetarium outreach van where I am right now watching the eclipse so I don't have to sit outside in my front yard. I am going to shake the van. You'll see the image shake. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's enough proof that this really is live. <laughs> Either that or we just timed that just right. No, it's really live. It's a live camera view. Uh, great. Uh, somebody says, please answer about photos by cell phone. So sure. Yep. All right. Good. We had that Let's, in our script. It's just farther on. So we're going to skip ahead to our to our friends in Irkutsk, Russia. <laughs> we're skipping ahead in the script. We sent them our script ahead of time. Um, and so we are skipping ahead to uh, section five. <laughs> so hang on. I'm going to stop sharing. And I need to go ahead in my PowerPoint here. Um, no problem. So I can go ahead and um, start speaking yeah. to this a little bit since Please do. Uh, smartphone photography doesn't always go the way that we expected. So lunar eclipses are fun and easy to view with your eyes. The tricky bit happens when you try to take a picture of it with your smartphone. Um, if you've ever tried to take a picture of the moon with your smartphone before, you know that it can look beautiful and magical in the sky. You try to take a picture of it and it does not look exactly like what you expect to see <laughs> when you take the actual photo. I have had many a failed moon photo. Um, so you might be wondering why it's so difficult to capture the moon using your phone. And we're gonna talk about that. Yep. So first off, the moon is smaller than you think in the sky. Try this with the moon if you can see it right now. Um, if you can see it out the window, if you're outside looking at the moon, extend your arm, stick out your thumb, close one eye, compare the size of the moon to the size of your thumb. I'll give you a second to do that because I know several of you are outside right now. How big is it? Is it like giant compared to your thumb? No, it's really not. So um, the moon takes up a smaller piece of sky than your thumbnail does and it's only a quarter the diameter of your thumb. It seems bigger in the sky, often when it's closer to the ground or something else per for perspective, but it's taking up a pretty small area overall. Exactly. Also compared to the dark sky close to it, the moon is really, really, really bright. Um, during a lunar eclipse, part of the moon is still pretty bright, even though another part of it is a little bit darker. So to try to take an image of the moon, especially during the, the eclipse, we need you to do three things. Number one, it helps to use a tripod or if you don't have a tripod for your cell phone, just prop it against something, prop it against the side of a building, a tree, a fence, put your arms, put your elbows on a fence, on a, on a wall, something to steady yourself. Um, if you just hold your phone, it'll shake and that'll make a blurry image. Step two, zoom in, make the moon bigger. So unpinch um, uh, on your screen. And step three, tap the screen to focus the moon and then try adjusting the brightness in the image to tone down the moon's brightness a little bit. Um, let me show you what we mean by that. All right, I'm gonna share my screen again. So there we go. Yeah, so you might notice if you try to take a picture of a room at night with a bright light or lamp, the room might look okay, but the light itself is probably too bright. The same thing happens with the moon. It's gonna be too bright for the auto adjustments that your phone camera makes due to the amount of contrast between the bright moon and the dark sky. So you can adjust for that. Uh, if you have an iPhone, you can tap the screen to focus your image and then drag the little sun icon that appears to the right to reduce the brightness. Reducing the brightness of the moon will help you get a clearer picture where you can actually start to see some detail on it. So you can scroll down to decrease the brightness. And you can try that anytime, but especially try it tonight with the eclipse if you're trying to take photos. Yep. Um, if you want to get a little fancier with your attempts, um, uh, you can get a phone, uh, a camera app for your phone. 
Um, the, some of these apps give you a lot more control over the exposure time, the light levels and the resolution. For iPhone, the Camera Plus Legacy app, the Camera Plus 2 app and the Nightcap app um, are good ones to try. Um, if you have an Android, the Camera FV5 app, we've been told is decent. It just so happens that Adriana and I both have iPhones, so we don't have screen examples of those. Um, but all of these apps allow you a lot more control to adjust the settings of your camera. Um, also, the iPhone models since the iPhone 11 have the internal ability to adjust the camera exposure based on how dark it is outside. So give that a try too. One thing I've also noticed is there's a little there's a little bit of um, uh, shaking adjustment with the iPhone past the 11 model, 11, 12, all that. So um, so keep trying, keep testing. Iteration right. is the name of the game. Can we go ahead and switch back over to our moon? You got it. I certainly will. Give me just a second. I need to go point the camera back at the moon. So no problem. I need to move over here. I'm going to adjust the tripod because the moon has moved. Because that darn Earth keeps turning. So what I've got on my um. I've got on my, this is what happens when I try to talk and do this at the same time. Um, I've got the camera on the tripod, so I'm just pointing the, moving the tripod because there we go, because it moved, and then I'm going to zoom in, and then I'm going to share so you didn't have to see and get really ill watching all of that. <laughs> there okay. we go. There you go. Excellent. And I'm going to just adjust the focus just a tiny bit. So that is me reaching over for the phone or for the camera. I think that's good. Okay. All right. It's a very delicate, delicate focus. So, okay, I think that's pretty good. Great, we did get some some questions. I'm scrolling through trying to catch all of them, but some questions, um, I think Geza covered some of them. Somebody asked, is this happening right now? Yes, it is, live view. Um, uh, let's see. I think that's it for questions up are, to now. How many of you are out there watching the eclipse? Who can see it? Who's out? Who's going out where it's chilly? Who's Who's got the lucky fortune of it being warm out where you are? Who is out there watching the eclipse? Throw that in the chat. We'd love to know. <laughs> One of the questions is, what is the perfect drink for watching lunar eclipse? I oh. have hot chocolate. That's my vote. <laughs> Well, one thing it uh, now in all seriousness, um, if you're inside where it's warm and you're just going outside every now and then, okay, that that's one thing. You're, the the best drink is your favorite. Um, if you're outside and you're going to be in the cold for an extended period of time, don't drink alcohol. Um, you may think you're being you're you're warmer when you drink it, but you're not your um the the blood vessels in your skin um uh basically you've got the the your blood is being pulled to the center of your body and it makes your extremities a lot colder and so you actually can be can be in big trouble if you're out for a long period of time and drinking alcohol when it's cold out so we actually don't recommend doing that if you're going to be out for a while Yes, we keep getting questions about if this is happening right now. Yes, is this live? Yes, is this pre-recorded? No, here we nope. are right now in real time. If yep. you have questions, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and to prove it, it is uh, by my by my uh, phone. It is one fifty nine a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time in the Chicago area. So that proves this is live. <laughs> And again, I'll do my little experiment. It's also a live camera view because I am shaking the platform that the camera is sitting on and you can see the image shake. I won't keep yes. doing that. Michelle, how long is the eclipse going to last? 
So the maximum eclipse, so when the moon is most fully within the Earth's shadow, um, that is 3.02 a.m. Central Time. So that would be 4.02 a.m. Uh, Eastern, 3.02 Central, 2.02 Mountain, 102 Pacific. And then if you're in a completely different time zone, you'll have to check and see what the equivalent is for you. Um, and the Partial eclipse ends at 4.47 a.m. Central Time, 5.47 a.m. Eastern, uh, and so on with the other time zones. So uh, the moon, wherever you are, if you're seeing the moon and it's really low in the sky, it might set for you before the eclipse ends. So you always have to keep that in mind. Uh, for these times. So for the Chicago area, we get to see the whole thing. So the clouds yes. cleared away. And uh, so we get to see the whole eclipse. Yes, excellent. Um, somebody asks, what stars are most visible during this eclipse in the Chicago light polluted sky? Oh, great question. That's an excellent question. Hang on, let me stick my head out the window. <laughs> We're finding out for you in real time by looking at the actual sky. <laughs> the camera. I'm sticking my head out the window, and oh, that eclipse looks cool. And you know what? When I'm seeing it with my eyes, one thing that's coming through to my eyes even a little better than the camera is I can see a little. It, it's a bit of a brownish shade to the shadow. It's hard to pick up with the camera, or at least with my camera with the settings right now. Um, so if you can see it with your eyes, go ahead. I'm looking at the constellation Orion right now. So Orion is to the left of the moon. Um, and so basically the belt of Orion is pointing directly at the moon. Um, and then there's a really, 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 really bright star um, to the left of Orion. And that is the star Sirius. You should see that from Chicago, even in the light pollution, you should see that. That's a nice looking sky, my goodness. It was like completely cloudy about two hours ago. So yes. it is really awesome to see a bunch of real sky. Absolutely. We've also got a question, does the eclipse have cultural significance to any groups? I do not know about that. Yes, it does. It depends on the cultural group. And, and also, this has also changed throughout history. Hang on, I'm going to reach over and adjust the focus. Just hang on, give me a second. And then I'll answer that. There we go. Um, so I'll give you an example from history. And I believe this was the uh, the culture, uh, the, the, the area of the world called Assyria, so the Assyrian culture. Um, this would have been a long time ago. So um, what they would look for, among other things, so what they would look for in the sky is a lunar eclipse and whether or not Jupiter was visible in the sky at the same time as the lunar eclipse. If it was visible, or if it wasn't visible, that told the Assyrian rulers and nobility, oh, wait a minute. Um, and, and I can't remember which one it is, if Jupiter was visible or not. It, it's one of them where if, if the signs were right, if it was a lunar eclipse and Jupiter was involved or not, they would say, okay, we have to call for a substitute king. We need to get some random guy off the street, bring him in, he will be the king. He's going to be the king. He will gather up all the bad, uh, all the bad vibes out there. And then we're not. I'm not quite sure if they really did kill him, um, but uh, bad things might happen to our to our poor unfortunate substitute king. Um, but it was all based on the visibility or not of Jupiter um, during a lunar eclipse. So there you go. <laughs> Excellent. Um, let's see. But, but also just anything different in the sky um, would have been potentially seen as maybe something bad until we could start to predict eclipses. Um, once eclipses could be predicted, 
um, then they might have been slightly less scary seeming. Excellent. Um, so we mentioned this briefly, but somebody asks, what apps do you guys have on your phone to take photos and videos of the magic the sky has to offer? Um, so I use Camera Plus um, or have used it in the past. I don't know. That's I got that advice from Michelle. So I don't know. I don't know if Michelle's using a different app now. No, no, no. I still no have Camera the same. Plus. Yeah, Camera Plus. And I think technically it's the Camera Plus legacy app. So they've got Camera Plus 2 out there right now. I don't have that one on my phone, um, but I've had Camera Plus on my phone um, for several years. So that's that's kind of my go-to for, uh, for giving it a try to take pictures of the night sky. I've gotten some pretty decent pictures of Orion and, and several of the other uh, nearby constellations. Those are relatively bright stars. Um, so that's actually a really good part of the sky to try out taking night nighttime pictures because those stars are brighter than what you would find at, at a few other times of year. Yes. All right. Um, I think that is, somebody asked, can we please do this for a meteor shower? Oh, I wish, except for one problem. We really can't get it on video very well. There are, there are nighttime cameras um, that NASA has set up that keep track of really, really bright meteors called fireballs. Um, there's, a, there's a fireball network that keeps track of some of those, um, but meteors are so quick um, that that would be really hard. I've got the camera zoomed in quite a bit. Actually, I think I can show you what it really looks like. So mm -hmm. that's actually, I think can, I think they can, oh wait, no, they can't. So hang on, I need to, I need to change the, um, the window that you're looking at. So this is actually what my camera is truly seeing. And then the white box is a digital zoom. Um, and so notice, because I've got it set for the moon, I can't set it for anything else. I can't get stars in the picture at the exact same time, at least not for this. Um, then when I double click on it, I can see, um, uh, I can see the moon uh, bigger for it for the digital zoom and um, the problem with the meteors though is they're so much dimmer than the moon I would have to really adjust um, the brightness but also we're gonna we'd be looking at a, at a small piece of sky you need to you need to you need to have your eyes look at a really big chunk of the sky and if I show you a camera view for that it's really going to limit the the number of meteors that we would see. We might see right. one in right. two hours, so that'd be pretty. That'd be kind of boring. <laughs> right. um, somebody asks, where is there a dark place in the Chicago area to watch the eclipse? North Northwest suburbs. You don't need to be in a special place to watch the eclipse. You just have to be anywhere that you can see the moon. So from Chicago, that means somewhere where you can get a good view. Uh, to the lower, closer to the horizon, southwest sky. Doesn't have to be, the light pollution in the city is not going to really impact the situation because the moon is so bright. So you're going to be able to see it even from a very light polluted sky. Nothing to worry about. But if anybody wanted to go to a dark sky, I know we've mentioned one or two places before, um, if they want to go just to see a dark sky, not necessarily for the eclipse, is there some place mm -hmm. you might want to, you might want to mention to them to go? Um, I forgot the name of the dark sky park. Uh, uh, Middle Fork River Forest Preserve. I always get the adjectives in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> but, Middle uh, River what, Fork Forest. No, no, Middle Fork <laughs> River Forest Preserve. Um, and what direction uh, from Chicago is it? South. South. <laughs> so, yeah, it's down near Champaign. So um, it is uh, a little bit uh, northeast of Champaign. 
and um, you can go camping there. And it's a place where some of our teens have been with uh, with Adler staff to see the Milky Way. Um, another place that is decent to go to is the Indiana Dunes um and then or warren dunes and then another place to go would be the uh green river uh state wildlife area and that is west of chicago about hour and a half two hours west so that's a popular place for the amateur astronomy community to go excellent why does this lunar eclipse last so long oh gaza and i had a great chat about that yesterday so this one lasts a while because, um, hang on, I'm gonna adjust the brightness of the, of the moon just a little bit. Give me a second. Okay, um, so the moon's orbit is not a perfect circle. Sometimes it's closer to earth, sometimes it's farther. When the full moon coincides with the time that the moon is closest to the earth. We call that super moon. When the moon, when the full moon coincides with the time when the moon is farthest from the earth, we call that micro moon. And when it is farthest from the earth, it's traveling a little slower. And so it spends, it, it basically spends more time in the shadow that way. So this is a micro moon full moon. And so it uh, it's spending more time in the shadow because it's physically going slightly slower than it does when it's uh, it's closest when it's closer to the Earth. Excellent. All right. Um, what's the best time to go look outside? It's happening right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can go look outside now. You totally um, can. And um, I'm just brightening this up just to see if I can spot any of the color showing up on the view. Um, but the maximum eclipse is at uh, 3.02 um, a.m. Central Time. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Can you see the color a little bit? Can you see a little orange? Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Oh, there's some stars visible too. Neat. I'm so tickled. This is the first time we've done this. <laughs> So I just find this endlessly fascinating. I hope you do too. And hey, there's a couple stars. Uh, we have to, we have, someone might ask, what is that? <laughs> and I don't know which stars those are. We'd have to check. Yes. I'm going to check. Um, someone's probably going to ask. In the meantime, yes, this lunar eclipse is safe to look at with the naked eye. It is solar eclipses that are not safe to look at with your eyes. Lunar eclipses are perfectly safe because um, you're just looking at the moon. Exactly. And I'm looking- Not too bright. I'm looking to see if I can tell what those stars are. I think those are just two relatively random background stars. So, but the Pleiades is farther up. And so I'm gonna do a little experiment. Um, I'm gonna see if I can actually spot the Pleiades in the view. So that might be kind of cool to see. And I don't think I can. I'm looking, no, I can't. So that's okay. okay. Great, let's see. Um... So we have had a couple of questions about um, the, oh boy, they're just coming so fast. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> what are some good stargazing apps? Um, Sky Safari is the one that we've usually recommended, but we do have an entire episode about uh, apps and books that are good for uh, stargazing. So we would recommend going back into the Sky Observers Hangout archives if you want a little bit more information about the different apps and options for you. Yes, that was a show in October of last year, uh, 2020. So look in our archive for, um, uh, it was called something like um, binoculars, books and apps, oh my, or something like that. Yes, and it yes. was, yes, that was it. I think it was October, I want to say 
26th of last year. Uh, but don't totally quote me on the date. But yes, yes. I have a whole show about that. Um, and to ask, after 302, is it over? Um, so I believe that's the maximum time. And then after that, we'll go back into a partial lunar eclipse. Um, yep. What time is the color change? We don't know exactly what color we're going to see or if there will be a significant color change, um, but it should be at the maximum, which is 302, right, Michelle? Well, that, and you can see color right now. I can't, anyway, I just- Oh, okay. It's a little bit harder to see with the- um, Yes, with the camera. With yeah. the camera. Mm -hmm. yep. That's so, that's neat. Yes, in order to show the darker part, I have to overexpose the lighter part. So that's why um, gotcha. you're seeing it look a, just a little bit strange, but um, I'm gonna- Oops, wrong way. And yeah, I'm curious to see what it looks like if you change the exposure on that. Yeah, so I'm really cranking the exposure. So I have it at one tenth of a second right now. So you can definitely see there is an orange tinge to it. So that is the collective light of sunrise and sunset uh, on the earth right now, this exact moment. Whoever is Very experiencing cool. sunrise and sunset, it's it's their, their sunrise and sunset that's that's making that that reddish color it's really pretty but see it with your eyes there's no a, there's no single time for the color change you can see it now excellent um what time zone are you basing this on we're in chicago so we're using central standard time yes yes um but so 302 central 402 eastern 202 mountain 102 Pacific for the maximum eclipse. And in other time zones, you'll just have to look it up what the equivalent is for 302 Central. Yes. That's interesting. Someone says watching from Mexico looks really different from here. How? How? Yeah. I'm just curious to hear about that. Yeah. I mean, your local sky might might um, cause the color to be a little bit different um, if there's a particular if there's a lot of dust in your local atmosphere. Um, if there's uh, if it's hazy, um, there's a lot of things that could cause it to be to to look different. So um, very cool. The where the shading is and everything that's going to be the same. Excellent. But yeah. It's, uh, uh, it might look a little different. Um, are you guys in the planetarium? If so, can I join you? <laughs> no, we are not there. <laughs> if you no. go there, nobody will be there and no. you will not be able to get inside anyway. <laughs> no, 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 uh, Adriana's at home. <laughs> I, I am in my driveway in the Western suburbs. <laughs> so yeah. believe it or not, it was easier to to get the moon here. Um, if we were at the Adler, especially in the observatory, we would have lost the moon already behind the building. So, uh, cause the observatory is on the east side and the main building is in the way to the west of the observatory. So that actually was not the best place for us to be to actually show you this eclipse. So um, it, was, uh, it was better to do it this way. Excellent. Um, hold on, there's one more that I missed. Oh, somebody asked, will there be a time-lapse version of this in case I doze off? There will not be a time-lapse version, but this video will be saved to YouTube, so you can always come back and finish watching the rest of it if you would like to go to sleep. <laughs> Absolutely. You can you can do a time swipe and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and do make that. Your own, make your own time-lapse. <laughs> exactly, exactly. DIY. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. I need to move the sure. camera. So give me just a bit here. And I realize we've gone totally off script, but that's okay. You all are here. Totally okay. While you are doing that, somebody asked what direction in the sky is the moon in Chicago right now? That is southwest. So look southwest if you've got a clear view in the city. Yep. All right, I'm just moving the tripod and going back. And then I'm going to go back to Zoom we're using zoom and streaming to youtube there's the zoom view there you go and then 
I also am going to adjust the brightness again just to see. If you want to see the, the light part of the moon, and I have to adjust the shutter speed really, uh, really quick. There we go. So you can see that. But then if I go with a much slower shutter speed, so I'm getting to, uh, I think I was on 1 13th of a second, which, um, wait, no, that's Somebody right. said, why shouldn't I stare directly at it? You can stare directly at it. It is just the moon. So in uh, situations where people are telling you not to look at an eclipse, what they're talking about is a solar eclipse. You should never look directly at the sun. The moon is perfectly safe to look directly at. Do not worry. Stare at it all you want. Yes, for sure. There we go. Sorry, I'm just doing some adjustments. There. Okay. No problem. All right, how are we doing on questions? Are they? Um, let me see. Do we know what is the first historical record of a lunar eclipse? I'm not sure Ooh. about that one. Um, I believe the first written record is probably, um, I'm gonna guess it's uh, some of those Babylonian clay tablets. Um, so there are the cuneiform uh, clay tablets from like two, three, four thousand or like four thousand years ago, something like that. Um, so the um, Babylonian culture used cuneiform writing. It's sort of that. Uh, it, it, it's it it looks like it looks like different triangles and shapes and things that they had pressed into wet clay and use them to record things. They use them to record um, business transactions and, and different writings and stories and stuff. And I believe some of the stuff that they also included was um, lunar eclipses. I don't think they could predict them, but they would at least write down when they happened. So I, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I don't know which eclipse, I don't know if that's truly true. I'm gonna guess that that might be the earliest record. Um, somebody asked, where is the ISS? Um, go to spotthestation.nasa.gov. Yep. To find out. <laughs> yep. And I'm just it's just always a good resource. Yeah, I'm just adjusting the camera view here. Right. Um, what time will it be red? It is already looking a little bit reddish. We can actually see it now in the camera view, which is exciting. Oh, Michelle, we're using, we're losing your sound a little bit. Oh, sorry. No problem. It's probably the battery. So I'm going to, I'm going to plug in. So me just a second. Um, when will it be full? It will be maximum for this eclipse. This eclipse is technically still a partial, um, but it will be mostly covered and that will happen at a 3.02 central time here in Chicago. There we go. I plugged, whoops, I plugged in my power cable for my headset so that probably it's it's cold out here so whoops so that probably was affecting my battery power quite a bit no problem so yes you can, if you're out right now it's i can see kind of a reddish tint to the moon for sure so yeah definitely get out and give it a try okay let me see is there a relation between animal behavior and eclipses? I do not know about lunar eclipses. Not Solar can... eclipses, yes, yeah. right? Um, the only thing I could think of maybe for a lunar eclipse, but I don't know if anyone has proven this or even studied it, is if there are birds 
who use the moon to the, the full moon or insects who use the full moon to navigate um, if they are confused for a few hours um, during a lunar eclipse, if it's if it's darker. I, I truly don't know if that's the case, but um, that'd be an interesting experiment to see. Um, animal yeah. behavior can change during a solar eclipse um, uh, for, for a little while, but uh, wow, great question. I, I really don't know if we know the answer to that one. Um, do you happen to know the exact date and time of the last eclipse? Because we're getting questions about that. that was, um, I believe it was May 26th. Let me check. Great. Um, hang on. I'm just looking it up. Oops. This is me trying to type. Uh, yes, it was May 26th, um, 2021, but in the Chicago area, it was cloudy. And mm -hmm. also it was only, it was a total eclipse, a total lunar eclipse, but we only saw if we, if we would have seen it, it would have been a partial here because the moon set before the eclipse right. was finished. So, um, but that one was a total. The next total lunar eclipse is May 15th of 2022. Mm -hmm. And then there's also one November 8th, 2022. By the way, May 15th, it could be the 16th, depending on what time zone people are in. Um, for the United States, it'll basically be the 15th. For Europe, it'll already be the 16th at that, at that exact time. Yes, excellent. And when is the eclipse ending? Uh, 4.47 a.m. Central Time. So that'd be 5.47 Eastern, um, 3.47 Mountain, 2.47 Pacific. Great. Um, What would I see if I was on the moon now? Ooh, I love that question. Um, what you would see is a solar eclipse um, because the moon or the earth would be passing in front of the sun um, as seen from the moon. So it would be pretty darn cool to see a solar eclipse from the moon and a lunar eclipse from the earth. <laughs> So, yeah, that'd be pretty neat. Okay. Um, but why is it red? Could you talk a little bit more about the um, color sure. again? Sure. And um, I'm just adjusting the brightness of the I'm view right now. Kind of hard to, it's a little hard to get it, but there we go. Um, so what's happening is the... The sun shines, actually, wait a minute. I have a PowerPoint slide, hang on. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go share an image because Adriana would love for me to show this. Is my screen showing up? Yeah. Awesome, okay, so. I like the addition of not even close to being to scale. <laughs> right, so Great. sun, <laughs> yep. Sun shines on the earth. Earth casts a shadow into space and Normally, the moon's orbit misses the shadow. The moon's orbit is tilted with respect to the Earth. Normally, it misses the shadow, and it'll either pass a little above it or a little below it. When the moon's orbit lines up with the shadow, that is when you get a lunar eclipse. And so um, the red color comes from the sunlight shining uh, through the atmosphere, and it's shining through um, a thick a uh, layer or thick uh, area of air and the air scatters the blue light from the sun leaving you the the oranges and the reds and so that's the color that you see it is the collected sunset and sunrise color um, at that exact moment um, and uh, 
we have two shadows um, for the earth. So one is called the penumbra, the other one is called the umbra. The sun is an extended thing making light. The earth is an extended thing. When you have the sun shining on the earth, you end up with a lighter outer shadow and a darker inner shadow. And that is illustrated here with this awesome image that Adriana took. Um, so she's got a couple of flashlights next to each other simulating an extended sun, which is what it is. The sun is not a point, it's a disc. Um, and so um, you can see that. And so when the eclipse started actually at 12.02 uh, a.m. Central, that's when the moon was moving into the lighter part of the shadow. And then before it got, a little bit before it got to the umbra, you probably noticed that a little bit of the moon uh, was a little darker shaded than the rest. And then it started getting into the umbra, the dark inner part of the shadow. And that's when you started really seeing uh, the eclipse take hold. Excellent. So right now it is uh, about 30, about 31 minutes prior to maximum eclipse. So we're getting there and we definitely can see um, a color shift. A color shift. Oh, it's so cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty visible too with, um, with the camera image, which is, which is yeah. exciting. Yeah. All right, more questions. Um, when's the next solar eclipse? Um, the next one at all or the next one visible here? Two different questions. The next one visible here is October 14th, 2023. That's a Saturday. Um, it's a partial solar. Um, the next one at all is in about two weeks. Um, it's not visible here, however. Um, when you have a lunar eclipse, when you've got the, the moon's orbit lining up with the Earth's shadow, it also means it lines up with the, with, the, with the line between the Earth and the sun at new moon. So that's when you get a solar eclipse. Um, so you'll either, if you have a lunar eclipse, you'll have a solar either two weeks, about two weeks before or about two weeks after. Um, in this case, I believe it's about two weeks after. Um, so the next one, I don't have the exact date. It's soon-ish, about two weeks. So, but that one's not visible from, I uh, don't believe it's visible in all in North America. Okay. Um, is it a total solar eclipse or a partial solar eclipse on the moon? On the moon, it would be a total. So, yeah. And it also is easier to have a total solar eclipse on the moon because the Earth is bigger. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to really block out the sun pretty easily. Um, yeah. Geza mentioned it depends also on where, where on the moon you are. Yep, for sure. Which makes sense. Um, let's see. And I'm going to uh, uh, shout out a message, a message to Geza. Geza, could you please look up the, the date of the next? Um, I, I was just trying to do it and, and uh, it's hard to do all that at the same time. If you could look up the date of the next solar eclipse, um, the one that's in about two weeks, if you could throw the date of that into the chat, I would really I know he's listening. <laughs> Excellent. Um, when did the eclipse begin? The partial began um, 118 central time. Mm -hmm. um, if you were on the moon, would you see an oh. Earth eclipse? <laughs> I just saw an airplane. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was cool. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, the question has scrolled away. 
I'm sorry. Well, um, we're doing our best yeah. um, to get all of the questions, but they do move kind of quick. Uh, let's see. So whatever that question was, whoever that was, throw it back in the chat. <laughs> I think I found it. If you were on the moon, if you were on the moon, would you see an Earth eclipse in two weeks? You were on the moon. Would you see an Earth eclipse? Uh, not totally. Only only part of it. Only a little bit. So the the moon the moon's shadow on the Earth is smaller. Um, I'm just gonna. I have to change the battery on the camera. So give me a second. Um, the the uh, the uh, the shadow of the moon on the Earth is is just smaller. The moon is smaller. So um, so whoops. So you, the, the shadow wouldn't be covering the whole earth like the earth's shadow covers the moon. So battery out on the charger and other battery is, um, oh. Um, somebody, hold on. Somebody asked what country the eclipse is happening in. Um, Canada, the United States, Mexico or Central America, far northern South America or Eastern Russia. You can get a detailed map on timeanddate.com. All right, I'm just putting the tripod Older, back on the camera. So this is the camera right here. It's just a, a regular DSLR camera with a zoom lens. So, and the tripod is here. So I'm just going to put it back on. Um, how old is the moon? And how do we know? Ooh, great question. That is a great question. Moon oh. is a little bit younger than the Earth. Um, and it's, it's about four and a half billion years old, a uh, little less. And how do we know? We have rocks that we've brought back from the moon. And the rocks that the Apollo astronauts brought back, um, we can date those. And so that's how we know. So, and, but also based on other things as well. And um, uh, Geza can probably add some more information about that also. But yeah, we, uh, we have rocks that have been brought back from the moon and also we have rocks that are from the moon as in this one right here. This is a moon meteorite or a slice, a piece of a moon meteorite. This is a rock that got blasted off the surface of the moon. When something hit it, it traveled through space and landed in the Sahara Desert. So that's what this is. Just happened to have a piece of the moon, you know, handy. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what planets are visible right now? Uh, Jupiter and Saturn. So, if you see a couple of bright objects, what'd you say there, Michelle? I'm just moving so I can get the moon back in the camera. Great. Um, actually, it's the middle of the night. Are those still visible? Um, uh, they're visible in the early evening. I'm not sure if they're still up. I believe they set already. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they're visible in the early evening. Um, I'm so used to answering that question at like 9 p.m., <laughs> not right. at 2.38 a.m. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, we're getting there. Looking cool. Okay. Um. And by the way, just wanted to say hello again to our friends in Irkutsk, Russia from the Irkutsk Regional Astronomical Organization. Um, I know you're there guys, uh, for, for all your help. And um, 
uh, uh, Dabro Pojal Pojalovat. I think I just said welcome. Um, so if you have anybody tuning in from Russia, they are translating our show into Russian right now and helping us with that. So um, I just wanted to say another hello to them. The moon is going to rise for them in uh, about 20 minutes. So they're going to see the moon rise. If it's clear there, they're gonna see the moon rise over, I believe over Lake Baikal, I think. Um, so seeing the moon there rising eclipsed over the lake um, would be pretty cool if you ask me. So just wanted to say hello to, uh, to our friends in Russia. Excellent. Um, is there water on the moon? And if so, where did it come from? Ooh, there is water ice on the moon. Um, yes, it's, it's in the, it's in the polar regions. Um, it's, there's ice in craters that are deep enough that at the poles, the sun doesn't get up over the, the rim of the crater. So it, the sunlight doesn't fall on the, on the floor of the crater and uh, it doesn't heat it up. So ice gets trapped there. It could be from um, uh, comets, asteroids uh, that impact. There are, there are other ways for, the, for it to happen as well. It's, it's a kind of a complicated explanation, um, but it's, there are ways to trap ice in these cold shadowed craters. And, and we know for sure that there is ice there. Um, because we've actually measured some of it in, in, in various ways. So anyway, yes, no liquid water on the moon, but water ice and also H2O uh, locked up in the chemistry of the rocks themselves. Yes. Um... Somebody asked what the constellation to the left of the moon is, and several people jumped in to say Orion, and they are correct. They are somebody correct. else somebody else afterwards asked, where is Orion? To the left of the moon. <laughs> to the left. <laughs> um, oh, that's awesome. And hey guys, feel free. If you uh, if if you see a question that you know the answer to, jump in. You can help each other out, especially if you have suggestions for um apps or anything else uh, that might help anyone else observe the sky. That would be greatly appreciated if, uh, if you have suggestions. Yeah. Somebody said they're seeing Taurus. Yes, Taurus is also closer to the moon. It is just less bright. So somebody was asking about the bright constellation. So yes. it was safe to say it was Orion. But if it's dimmer, yes, Taurus is next to the moon. Yes, for sure. By the way, I plugged, since I plugged in, is my sound okay? Was it all yes. right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm guessing the, the battery was just getting low on the, um, I'm looking, oh, so pretty. Oh, Someone goodness, asked, guys, three little see. stars top right of the moon. Do you mean in the stream? Because I don't see anything in the stream. Or do you just mean in the sky? Um, is it maybe the Pleiades? Uh, maybe. Um, the, oh, uh, well, it's, yeah. Wh which direction? <laughs> need, need more information to know. More information, please. Yes. <laughs> top, top right, top right of the moon. It's probably the Pleiades. Yeah, they're talking top right. Yeah, that would be the Pleiades. Yeah, yeah. Um, when's the Adler going to op up, open up? Op Ope up. Uh, the Adler's going to open up uh, March 4th, 2022. And we can't wait because we want to be able to do stuff like this with you in person. All right, guys, get out there and look at the eclipse. It is really cool. It is really cool. I'm looking out the window. Um, what I see is just a sliver of lighter color. And I can see good suggestions of reddish, but kind of dusty brick red, not bright red. Um, and oops, sorry, um, and kind of kind of a reddish gray color to my eyes, I would say. But I've got a bright light right here, so that might be messing mm -hmm. with how how I see it. So if you're out in the dark, you might see it a little a little bit. Better. 
Um, somebody asked what direction we are looking southwest closer closer to the west than to the south. And it's getting lower. So that's why I have to keep moving the camera. Absolutely. Focus just a little bit. Um, when rocks are brought from the moon to earth, do they change in texture or density? The outside texture changes. Yeah. Well, it depends on how it's brought. It depends on how it's brought to the earth. Um, right. So astronauts have brought back rocks. The texture on the outside does not change on those. If the rocks from the moon come in as a shooting star, um, then you will get the outside texture will change because the rock will heat up uh, a lot on its way into the earth and the outside will melt um, into what we call fusion crust. Michelle can show us the texture of that a little bit better. Um, oh, go ahead, because I need to get this open and my fingers are cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there no we go. Problem. So, so the fusion yeah. crust looks a little bit different on different types of rock, but it is usually uh, dark and a little bit smoother. So there this we go. is a meteorite. Here's the outside, the fusion crust that she was talking about. So it's kind of smooth. You can tell it's, it's, uh, it's definitely different from this side. This is the inside yes. of the rock. And Adriana, this comes from a special place. Tell our viewers where this rock comes from. That came from Mars. It's a Mars rock, guys. I'm holding a Mars rock. She get to hold a Mars rock. So I've got, hang on. In, in, you're probably thinking, where in the world do you get Mars rocks and moon rocks? Well, online, of course. So we've got, hang on, I'm gonna get my camera to adjust. So there's the moon rock slice, and there is the Mars rock piece. So inside, outside. But the yeah. ones the astronauts bring back, you don't want those to change. Um, they they try to keep those as pristine as possible. Yes. Um, what's in the center of the moon? Is it like Earth? Huh. It has a core. Um, I don't know the exact composition of the core. It is likely very, it's solid. I don't know if there's a liquid layer or not. Geza hopefully can help us with a little more detail related to that. Um, but... It, it wouldn't be exactly like Earth, but it has a lot, it has similarities to Earth because Earth is where the moon came from. So something the size of Mars, um, something the size of Mars glanced, did a glancing blow to the Earth. Um, it, it hit the Earth, the early Earth and uh, stuff vaporized, splashed out and formed the moon. So the moon and Earth are remarkably similar um composition wise so if they formed separately you would expect them to be more different so again Gaza can hopefully uh, uh put in a little bit more information about that so oh and i got a text message from our friend pavel in russia and oh um, they have sent me two images of the eclipse made from the International Space Station by cosmonaut um, Peter Dubrov. So I can go see if oh. I can get those because I gave our friends a Google Drive link. And let me go take a look really quickly and see if I can get those images. And if so, we can see what the eclipse looks like to the International Space Station astronauts and cosmonauts. Um, I just need to go to that there, and there it is, and I'm going to open it, and, oh, cool, all right, hang on, I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen, I need to, here we go, 
we so go. Asked, is the moon supposed to disappear because of light pollution? Because I don't see it anymore. Not because of light pollution. It might just be cloudy, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also A picture. Yes. So, do you see the picture? Yes. Look at that. That's cool. The the moon as seen through the Earth's atmosphere near the edge, right there. Oh, wow. That's cool. Thank you, cosmonaut uh, Peter Dubrov. That, these are awesome pictures. Um, the space station orbits the Earth every 90 minutes, and so they have to come around again in order to see it. So they should they should hopefully get some more pictures um, soon of uh, of the actual closer to totality or or maximum eclipse. So thank you, um, Pavel, for sending us those. That's pretty awesome. Spasibo. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I hope I am not butchering the Russian language. <laughs> I think oh. they'll forgive you if you are. I hope so. I tried. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be on for just a little bit longer. We wanted to be on long enough for our friends in Russia to hopefully see the eclipse uh, rising, or eclipsed moon rising over the lake. So we'll be on for about another 15 minutes and, or so. Um, so uh, get your questions in while you can. We're enjoying, uh, enjoying the eclipse, but that means the rest of the eclipse, you can go out and see it for yourself. Um, because yes. that's the beautiful, the beautiful thing about the eclipse. Um, yes. Die right now. Okay. Um, uh, how often do eclipses this full take place? Uh, if you're talking about a total lunar eclipse when the moon is fully within the Earth's shadow, um, or actually just a lunar eclipse at all, um, partial or total, it's once or twice a year on average. You might get a you might get a couple more. You might get a few fewer, but once or twice a year for a lunar eclipse. Um, it's just that it may not be visible. They may not all be visible from the same location. That, that's one of the main differences. Yes. Um, which direction is the moon if I'm standing outside in Chicago? Southwest? Yes. More west than south. Yeah. And it is about, uh, about uh, a little less than halfway up in the sky mm -hmm. right now. So if you're having trouble seeing it, it might be because you might have a tree or a building or something in the way. Yes, somebody just mentioned that. That is probably what happened. Um, is it starting or ending? We are in the middle of it. Yep. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice part. We're in the middle. I, I, yeah. I kind of wasn't expecting that we'd be on uh, this far, but I mean... It's so rare to get a clear sky in Chicago in November that we're taking advantage of every second we can get here. Um, so like I said, we'll be on for about another 15 minutes and then uh, we'll, we'll let you guys go in just a bit to uh, go enjoy the eclipse for yourselves. But we hope it's clear skies where you are. Um, and if we've had some new viewers, where, where are you? Where are you tuning in from? Um, I, I would expect people probably haven't been on with us the entire time, so you might have missed at the beginning. So where are you? Let us know in the chat. We'd love to love to say hi to where you are. I'm seeing Louisiana, Outer oh. Mongolia, Richmond, what? Indiana, Odessa, Florida. Can I see it now from Florida? Yes, right? Where in Florida? Where in Florida? Odessa. I don't actually Odessa, know where that is. Odessa, Florida. Well, let's go check the time and date website. So hang on. Uh, there we go. 
And let's do the pop out map. And my computer is probably kind of cold right now. So uh, then we go to we go to Odessa, Odessa, Florida. There we go. Okay, so for you, it is visible and it is about a third of the way up in the sky for you right now to the west. Um, basically, almost due west for you right now. And about a third of the way up. Um, great. I think some people are asking about, I saw like a couple questions about light pollution. It went by so fast. Um, but I'm seeing, are more stars visible now than normal? Um, so you might be able to see a little bit more than when the moon is full and bright because the brightness of the moon makes it so that the contrast is too much. So um, you'll see less stars because the moon is so bright, uh, but you're not going to see more stars than like a night where the moon is not out, for example. Absolutely right. Just adjusting the focus on the camera here just a little bit. That look okay. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Um, West Chicago, how long before it fully passes? Uh, we are nearing um, the maximum, the most covered that we're going to see it. It's not going to be fully covered. Um, and then we will go back into um, a partial eclipse as the moon moves out of the Earth's shadow. And Perfect. that will last for. Um, like an hour and a half? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay, great, thank you. Um, let's see. got people tuning in from all kinds of places so that's exciting awesome uh is it a blood moon well what's really interesting is that name um came about originally just a few decades ago it's not a, it's not an old term uh, as far as we know it's um it was originally meant to be referring to like apocalyptic sort of uh, um, stories, information, that sort of thing. Um, but it's been co-opted by just the rest of us, <laughs> general public, I guess. So it kind of just refers to the color that you see mm -hmm. for the eclipse. So, um, so yeah, th yes, this is a quote blood moon, but um, not a not a total lunar eclipse for this one. Yes. Um, and I'm just I'm just gonna move the camera again just a, just a sec here. So go ahead. Someone asked, how can I get into the Adler for free? <laughs> We're not open right now. Um, however, we will be open uh, in March of 2022, March 4th of 2022. Um, and look into Illinois resident discount days. We're not the only museum who has them, but that is a way to get into museums for cheap or free. Yep. And if you live in the city of Chicago, um, there are museum passes uh, available mm -hmm. for all of the uh, museums in the park museums. And um, so those you just check out from the from your local library branch. And uh, so those are available if you have a Chicago Public Library library card. So check those out. Yep. Literally and figuratively. Check them out. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. And we are just about three minutes from maximum eclipse. And so get your eyeballs on it if it is where you are. Oh, wow. That is um, somebody asked if it moved. Uh, we're looking at it using a camera and the camera is moving. Yes. Because, whoops, that's because um, uh, it is sitting next to me. And every time I move, I tend to move the, uh, the camera a little bit because it's on a tripod. Wow. That's really pretty. Sorry, I keep saying that. I know I keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any, I don't have flowery vocabulary to uh, use. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, when is the next one? May 15th, right? Yep. May 15th for starts... the next. Yeah, May 15th next year. That's It starts like nine o'clock at night or something, Chicago time. So. Yes. We hope we'll have some telescopes at the Adler for that one. But we will let you know what we're going to do. Yes. more questions how we doing i am scrolling through it i may have missed it what causes the red hue ah. so i will hang on i'm going to check real quick the moonrise in irkutsk russia is in just a couple minutes very cool so we hope we, so we hope we'll get a picture from pavel uh when that happens but let me go back to um adriana's fabulous illustration of what's going on. So what causes the color? And I think you can see my screen right now. Um, so sun shines on the earth, earth casts a shadow into space. And um, when the moon's orbit lines up with the earth's shadow, when, when they align, that's when you get a lunar eclipse. And uh, the red color comes from when the, when the sunlight shines through the air um, at the edge of the earth, all around at the edge. And the earth's air scatters out the blue colors of light. And the, um, uh, the blue color goes away, leaving you with the, with the oranges and the reds. And so that's the color that we see during a lunar eclipse. But that can also depend on um, if the air is really cloudy, if it's really dusty, if there's a lot of volcanic ash, um, all sorts of stuff that can affect the color. So it might, the moon could appear red, it could appear orange, gray, brown, it could almost even look like it just about disappears. So um, that's why we, we weren't sure what color this one was going to be until we saw it. I'm going to text our friend Pavo and ask if it is clear um, um, in Irkutsk, Russia, are they going to be able to see it? Um, is that the Orion constellation near it? To the left of it? Yes. It does. Um, also Taurus. Yes. Uh, where is a good place online to buy moon and Mars rocks? Oh, um, from a reputable meteorite dealer. Do not get them on Amazon. Um, so the, um, the, the dealer that we got ours from is, um, uh, oh, shoot, uh, Adriana, could you do me a favor and um, uh, are you able to type in the chat at all? Yeah, are you able yeah, to do that? Try. Do me a favor and type out as I spell it because I can't do all that at the same time. A E. Hey, oh, sorry. 
A E R O L I T E. A E R L I T E. L I T E. Yep. Ailerite meteorites. All right. And Pavel says we are waiting for images from our spots. So it sounds like um, they're going to be getting some images from uh, in Irkutsk, Russia. So those of you in the United States, it's a bunch of folks in Eastern Russia right now where the moon has uh, already risen or is just literally now rising over the horizon. Um, and so they are just now able to see the eclipse. We are truly sharing one sky right now. We are sharing the moon together. So the moon rise um, is happening. It is just after 5 p.m. in Irkutsk, Russia right now. So um, they, the Irkutsk Regional Astronomical Organization has um, some folks out with cameras and their goal is to get some pictures and then uh, they will get a couple and hopefully upload those to our Google Drive and we can share those with you as we're signing off. I'm, I'm hoping, uh, it depends on how quickly they're able to get the pictures to us. So we'll give them a few minutes if they can do that. Excellent. Is the very bottom left going to stay white? Oh, shoot. Um, yes, it will. And I was the one who just caused the tripod. No problem. Go down. Sorry. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, technical difficulties. Please stand by. <laughs> there we go. Um, yes, that little sliver was not going to be fully within the Earth's dark shadow. So yeah, that little tiny bit is going to stay lighter. Will another planetarium be streaming the moon eclipse? I don't know. <laughs> um, Do you know? Is the Griffin Observatory doing something? I don't I think know. The Griffith Observatory was doing something, yeah. Um, but also the time and date website, um, they are streaming. And if you go to, let's see. Uh, they're on YouTube. So um, yes. if you go to timeanddate.com uh, and you go to the sun and moon drop down and go to live streams, um, you'll see their live stream that's on YouTube. So you'll see yes. the uh, link there. Yes. Um, when you said Orion Taurus, what did you mean by that? Somebody asked what constellations they were seeing to the left of the moon. So the answer are, is the constellations Orion and Taurus. Would you like me to bring up um, Starry Night? Sure, go for it. All right. So let me bring up a desktop planetarium program and we can see which constellations we're talking about. Because sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. So give me just a second. I'm just waiting for the program to load. I guarantee computers know when you have an audience. <laughs> That's when they decide to go more slowly. Okay. All right, so let me do a new share. And go here. All right, here we have the time and date website, and I'm going to label the constellations. So let's do some stick figures. And let's do some labels. There we go. So the moon is over here. It's kind of hard to tell, um, but because it's, they actually show the eclipse in the in the planetarium program. Um, but to the uh, left of the moon, you've got um, right here and Orion over here. So we've got the, the belt of Orion is pretty much pointing at the moon. 
um, it, it points at the face of Taurus the bull and it point, it's pointing at the moon right now. If you go the other yes. way, um, that is pointing toward um, the, the star Sirius right here. And then up above Orion is Gemini. There. So there you go. That's when we said it's to the left. So Taurus is to the left of the moon and Orion is to the left of Taurus. Yes. I can already tell that the moon is that sliver is slightly so that light part is slightly brighter so yeah. the moon is starting to exit the shadow <laughs> all right Very we'll give cool. our friends in in Irkutsk Russia just a couple more minutes that they can get those to us if not um hopefully we can show those on our social media feeds later today so um all right folks last chance for questions last chance yes. get them in now Anything else you would like to know, let us know in the chat. And we thank you so much for joining us. I know that uh, this is awfully late for most of us. <laughs> um, but if you're tuning in from someplace else in the world, uh, we hope you've enjoyed looking at the sky with us at the same time. Just know that there are literally millions of people looking up at the sky right now. And... Um, they're not just in your city, they're not just in your state, in the country. they're in many countries around the world. So that's a, that's a really cool thing to keep in mind. Yes. All right. Um, a few more, and then we'll, then we'll end for tonight. How long will the one in May last? Oh, good question. Uh, Oh, by the way, that next solar eclipse is December 4th, 2021. Um, oh, but it's not visible here. Uh, the one. Um, in... Also, okay. somebody asked, will it just be a full moon at the end? It depends yes. on how far. Yes. I mean, yeah. it will take some time to get there, though. It's going to go back through the um, partial phase first. Yes, and depending on where you are, it could set before it gets out of that. So, um, but yeah, it's gonna go back to being, well, it is a full moon. It will go back to looking like a plain old ordinary full moon. Um, the next one will last, I'm looking on the time and date site right now. Uh, it will start, the partial eclipse starts at 9.27 p.m. on May 15th, that's central. And the partial, the ending of the partial eclipse after totality ends at 12.55 a.m. So 10.27, 11.27, 12.27, so about three and a half hours for that one as well. Great. Um, let's see. I'm just going to look in the Google Drive to see if they might have. Did any pictures? Um, oh, what site did we use to show constellations? Was that um, Stellarium or Starry Night? I used Starry Night, but Stellarium um, is uh, an online uh, um, place where you can go to get that. Um, so if you could put, can you put that web address in the, in the chat for them? Yes, the okay. Stellarium web address. Check them real quick if they've got any images, any others. Oh, still waiting. Let's see. Oh, I see. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, what, oh, Irkutsk is pretty. Okay, hang on. I need to show you the pictures that they that they got. It looks like um, it looks like there might be some clouds near the horizon. So, can you see the picture? Look at that in the back. That is so pretty. I think it's a church. Oh, neat. That's neat. And then uh, I think this gives a better view of, oh, hang on, there we go. Uh, so you can see the clouds. 
near the horizon. Um, but they have snow on the ground already. They're at about 10 degrees higher latitude than Chicago. So we're at 42, they're at 52. So they're still waiting to see the moon. I think they, they need it to get up above the clouds. So we may have to sign off before they do that. But yeah. um, anyway, <laughs> that's okay. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna do one last moving of the camera and then we will sign off for tonight. Um, whoops, sorry, I'm moving the camera, sorry. This is, there we go. Okay, there. All right. What do you think, Adriana? Have we done it? Did we do it? I think we did I, it. I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, um, yes. What is the cluster of six bright stars above and to the right of the moon in Chicago? That's the Pleiades. Yep. Yep. That is the Pleiades. All right. Any any last few questions? Um, I think they are mostly comments now. Right. Um, if, if there's a question that we have uh, already answered, this video will continue to be up so you can always just scroll back. Um, I know some people are in the comments asking us to repeat stuff. The information is still in this video so you're always welcome to scroll back and look through it. Absolutely, this will remain in perpetuity on the Adler's uh, YouTube. So, yes. all right. Well, let us wrap up for tonight. Do you want to say a few things about uh, what we've got coming up? Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, so we are going to have our next episode in December. We're going to attempt something that we haven't done before. We're going to try to show you a live view from our observatory of a comet that was discovered relatively recently called Comet Leonard. It won't be visible to the naked eye, but we may be able to get it from our new telescope. The show date is Tuesday, December 7th, 2021 at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. So also a weird time for that one. Um, but we will be happy to be there looking up with you all. Uh, and as a reminder, the Adler Planetarium will fully reopen to the public on Friday, March 4th, 2022. We are very much looking forward to hopefully meeting some of our online friends in person. So start making your plans to join us at the Adler. And if you happen to run into either of us at one of our in-person programs, feel free to come say hi. Yes, please do. And even if you're watching this program after the eclipse, uh, we also would love to see your lunar eclipse photos and your observations. Um, so we'd love to know you were out there connecting with the sky and observing the eclipse. Even if, if you might not have put anything in the chat, we would love to know that you were there. Um, wait for the ending slide on this broadcast for the Adler social media feeds. And just please use the hashtag look up. That's how we know uh, you were actually watching us and uh, you yes. want to let us know how you, how you saw and what you did and where you were and how it went. Yes. Also to clarify that December 7th event um, is going to be a virtual event. Just yes. in case. Yes. Yes. That is not, that is not an in-person event. No, um, it is not. It is, yes. That is definitely virtual. All right. Uh, great. So thank you all so much for joining us and supporting our programming. We love sharing this time with you. And as always, we'd love to get some feedback from you. So Jennifer will link a feedback survey in the chat. Uh, it'll only take a really short time to fill it out. And if you filled it out before, you can absolutely fill it out again so we can keep track of our improvements. It helps us make our shows even better. And you can send us suggestions for future show topics, stuff that you're curious about. So um, you can also find that feedback survey link in tonight's program description. So if the chat closes before you click the link, you can always access it there. Absolutely. And um, again, we've been mentioning them throughout the show. Many, many thanks to our friends in Irkutsk, Russia. Um, 
we like to say thank you, Spasiva, to the Irkutsk Regional Astronomical Organization in Irkutsk for translating and presenting our show um, to our Russian friends. Thank you to the International Planetarium Society for connecting us to our new friends in Irkutsk. And we hope this is not the last time we get to work with, uh, with our friends from around the world. Um, keep looking up, go out, check out the moon. It's still up there. Um, yes. And if it's in your sky and know that there are people all over the world doing the same thing right now. So enjoy the eclipse, everyone. And good night. Good night. <laughs>